Children deserve to grow up with privacy, safety, and autonomy. Not an expert, but I am a mom. These are the things that really bother me. I'm my platform to discuss it. In this video, I'm going to be diving deep to the topic of putting our children's lives and documenting them online. I'll be highlighting the long-term mental effects. I'll be sharing some facts. I think it's time to rethink the way that we document our kids' lives for them. Let's protect their childhood in the digital realm together. It's easy to fall into the trap of posting every single thing online. Trust me, I know. Today, I want to talk about why it's so important to rethink how much of our children's lives are on the internet. In a world that feels increasingly connected through screens, we live in a time where children are growing up digital footprint before they even know what that means. And while we share out of love, that online presence can have unintended consequences. From safety risks to identity issues, is it time to reconsider what we post and why? First, there's undeniable risk of putting our children's personal information out there. From names, locations, to faces, these details can easily fall into the wrong hands. According to the FBI, over 15,000 children have their identities stolen each year in the U.S., often before they even hit their teenage years. Every year, millions of children go missing globally, according to the international statistics. In the United States, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children reports about 460,000 children go missing annually. Worldwide, estimates suggest that 8 million children go missing globally each year, including those abducted, trapped, or running away from dangerous environments. These numbers highlight the importance of increased awareness, vigilance, and protective measurements to ensure the safety of our children worldwide. I'm fortunate enough to have grown up during an era where I know that the internet never forgets. Once something is shared, it can be copied, stored, and spread without our knowledge or control. This is a time where children are growing up as digital natives, so it's impossible to completely keep your kids from engaging in the online realm. I get that. Right now, it's the time to set the example. It's not the most important thing to pull out our phone. It's not ideal either. Living through our phones is no way to live. Being a content creator is a perfect example of living in the digital realm. What I do with the tool of creating a digital footprint is used to expand consciousness and awareness for good. I would never use my online platforms as a prime example of my existence here on Earth. When you're constantly being the center focus with a camera on you, your parents are taking pictures of you, taking videos, documenting. It almost feels like you don't know how to behave. You don't know how to act. You don't know who you are. Because there's a lens capturing your every moment. How do you live like that? And what does that do to your mental health? Your identity becomes lost. And you become whatever your parents want you to be in front of the camera. If you're being told to be happy and smile forcibly, then how can you tell the difference at such a young age of when an appropriate time is to be yourself? To document these moments with your children and hold them close to your heart and keep them sacred is so beautiful and important. It's what we do with those memories thereafter. It starts to get muddled. The reasons become unclear of why we share our children online. What are we looking to gain? 
The number one reason I get is that people want to share their children with family members and friends that are distant and can't see them on a daily basis in person. My response to that could be endless. There's so many ways around that, but I'll let you figure that one out. Now is the time that we break the cycle and show our children that living in the moment, in the here and now, is the most important part of life. And the digital realm is just a perk. I want to take a moment to share the story of Ruby Frankie and her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. It's a chilling example of the potential dangers and consequences of exposing our children online. Ruby Frankie was a family vlogger who gained fame by posting videos documenting the everyday lives of her six children and her husband. At its peak, eight passengers boasted over 2 million subscribers, but behind the scenes, troubling issues were mounting. Ruby Frankie and her family launched Eight Passengers in 2015, focusing on the day-to-day -day activities of their children, from school drop-offs to disciplinary actions. The channel quickly became popular as viewers became invested in the personal details of Frankie's family life. As time passed, concerns became to arise about the nature of the content, particularly how Ruby disciplining the children and the possible exploitation of their privacy for views and monetization. One of the first red flags that caught the public's attention was Ruby's authoritarian approach to parenting, which she displayed openly on the channel. Some incidents that sparked outrage were public shaming, withholding food, disciplinary actions, public outcry and criticism, worsening allegations, and more. As people tuned in, critics became to voice their concerns. The ethics of the family vlogging became unclear, especially when it came to the children's rights to privacy. Many viewers felt uncomfortable watching personal moments of the children's lives and the, the fact that the children didn't have any control over it. The constant documentation of their lives blurred the lines between what was appropriate to share publicly and what should remain private within the family. This led to widespread criticism with many people calling for child measures and regulations. In a shocking development in 2023, Ruby was arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse. She had started collaborating with Jody Hildebrandt, a self-proclaimed family therapist and life coach. Ruby's affiliation with Hildebrandt, whose teachings encourage extreme discipline and control in the family dynamics, raised more alarms. The incident that led to Ruby's arrest involved one of her sons escaping Hildebrandt's home and seeking help from a neighbor. I cannot tell you the conditions of the child because it's so overwhelmingly sad. You can look into the story if you want. I'm not going to add any clips or images from the event because it is so disturbing. So trigger warning with this topic, but I felt like it was so timely and necessary. No idea the extent of this story. I watched a documentary on Ruby Frankie last night and Eight Passengers. It just kind of goes hand in hand with the topic of putting our children online. The Ruby Frankie case is a horrifying example of the dangers and an extreme example as well. Like there is a wide range from just posting pictures all the way to the darkest side of family vlogging. This is a horrifying example of the dangers of using your children for content creation purposes. And the psychological, emotional, and physical damage that can result when boundaries are crossed. The intense scrutiny of the public eye combined with the pressure to constantly produce content for financial gain can lead parents to make decisions that prioritize views and money over their children's well-being. In Ruby's case, her strict and harmful parenting methods were not only accepted by her online community for years, 
but may have escalated it due to the lack of oversight and regulations around family vlogging. I think the key takeaway from this topic and side note is the lack of consent. Frankie's children had no say in the constant exposure online. From the moment they were born, their lives were shared with millions of people, leaving no room for privacy or control over their own stories. Children in the family vlogging industry, including the eight passengers, are often used as props for content. Personal moments, punishment, daily struggles were all documented for views, raising ethical questions about the parents' motives, shaming and abuse from Ruby, from her harsh parenting methods, which were shared, crossed the line into emotional and physical abuse, which were normalized for viewers. This holds long-lasting consequences for her children. Ruby Frankie's downfall serves a grim reminder of the potential horrors of exposing our kids online. Her case is an extreme example of what can go wrong when parents fail to consider the privacy, safety, and autonomy of their children, all for the sake of content creation. Even if it's as simple as Facebook, you are creating content for other people's enjoyment. If it was just for personal reasons, then you would make that private. We have Google Photos now, cloud. There's just so many other ways to document your child's life and keep it sacred for yourself and for them. There's also a movie called The Sound of Freedom, which really sparked this debate in my mind. It's a really moving film, not only highlighting the protective instincts of parents, but also touch on the broader society duty to safeguard children from harm, whether through emotional resilience, fighting for justice, or just taking a stand against the real world threats. These stories show the power of protection, love, and advocacy for children. Parents should educate themselves and watch The Sound of Freedom because it sheds a light on the horrifying reality of child traffic, a global crisis that affects millions of children. The film highlights the importance of being aware of the dangers that children face, not only in a vulnerable world, but in everyday environments. By watching this movie, parents can better understand the scope of these threats and the critical need for vigilance, protection, and advocacy to ensure the safety of their children. It also encourages parents to take a look in their communities to prevent exploitation and support organizations working to stop these crimes. We're the parents. If we're not doing something, we're not supporting organizations or speaking out using platforms with our voices, taking a stand on this matter, then you'll fall for anything. One of the most crucial aspects is consent. When we post pictures of our children, they can't give us permission. We are shaping their online identity for them. How will they feel when they're old enough to have a say? Not only does it affect their future, but we're also seeing the psychological toll of growing up under the scrutiny of social media. Studies show that the more kids that are exposed online, the higher the risk for anxiety and social pressures. We want to protect our children's sense of self, not turn them into digital personas. Before I wrap up this video, I do want to make a point that I am not fear baiting anybody or trying to scare society out of engaging with the online community when it comes to your children. It's a buffet. It's a catalog for perversion and pedophilia. We have to keep our minds open to these topics. This is just to help educate and inform and open your eyes to a different reality, one that we don't have to worry so much. Anything can happen, but it's good to be aware to help protect our kids and be the best parents we can be for them, for their future. Keeping them offline 
We give them the freedom to just be kids. So what can we do? Here are some ways we can protect our children's privacy while still documenting our family's special moments. Keep personal posts private or shared with trusted family and friends. Avoid posting identifying information such as names, locations, and especially school details. Focus on enjoying the moment rather than documenting it. Teach our children early on about the importance of privacy and digital boundaries. Our children deserve to grow up with privacy, safety, and autonomy. Before we hit post next time, let's ask ourselves, are we sharing for them or for us? Let's start a conversation about protecting their future, both online and off. Just want to say thank you. It's truly an honor to support on such an important topic. The small efforts and work I'm doing to raise awareness and protection for our children is powerful, and it's amazing to be a part of that effort. I'm always here to help in any way I can, even if it's just in a very small way. Keep shining, and thank you for the difference you're making in the world just by watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And I just want to say thank you for stopping by.